Hey, it's Chris here. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about what psychologists call cognitive dissonance and why you see a lot of that in the comments that MAGA uh, proponents will post in my videos. And you'll probably see it in a lot of other videos if you've watched other channels. And it's an important concept, and I'm going to try to, for those of you who are Christian, I want to put uh, put them in some, some kind of biblical terms to help understand what cognitive dissonance is and why channels such as mine are causing such cognitive dissonance among MAGA people, especially those who are evangelical Christians or profess Christian faith. Uh, why it is so disruptive to their lives and why they get so angry uh, and, and why this is so hard for MAGA people to really honestly assess their own movement and their, and their leader, uh, Donald Trump. So what is cognitive dissonance? We have two things that uh, flow together in our lives. We have our beliefs what we believe to be true, right, good, honorable, noble, what, what's right, what's wrong. And then we have our actions. And one of the things that the Bible does teach us as Christians is part of the problem that we face in our lives is that our beliefs shaped and informed by uh, the teaching of scripture and our Christian faith, that we struggle because of our struggle with sin, falling short of God's glory. We, we struggle to make a consistency between the two, that our actions are perfectly consistent with our beliefs. And the Bible teaches that no one except for Jesus Christ when he walked the earth was perfect in their beliefs and actions uh, together. So that means that there is going to be inconsistency. And the Bible talks about a conscience, and God put that in all of us as human beings, this idea that when our actions don't line up with our beliefs, we feel troubled inside, we feel guilt or shame, our conscience rises up and tells us, hey, what you're doing doesn't match with what you believe. And when that happens, we begin to say, oh my, uh, I better change how I'm behaving. I better change what I'm doing to bring myself more in line with my beliefs. As a Christian, I believe that the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit works with us and in us to overcome those works of the flesh, those that the Bible calls works of the flesh that are inconsistent with our beliefs and bears the fruit of the Holy Spirit, uh, brings up within us those character qualities that would most lead us to want to shape our lives to be consistent with our beliefs. When people want to engage willfully in things that are inconsistent with their beliefs. They create this firewall. They compartmentalize. That allows somebody who's been a pro professing Christian, for example, uh, for many years, uh, to uh, decide that they're going to cheat on their spouse and, and how that person can be going to church for a year uh, uh, talking about going to Bible study and everything at the same time having an adulterous affair. They create this firewall between uh, their uh, beliefs and their actions. And the Bible talks about searing the conscience uh, that in, in specific areas we, we sear, we destroy our conscience. We, we erect a firewall so there is not uh, th uh, information going back and forth that we're not troubled in our hearts and our lives. Well, what a lot of people are been doing, and this is not just a MAGA Republican thing, this is, I think, across the spectrum in the United States, what we've done is we're creating a firewall between our beliefs and our political activity, uh, such as the two will never meet. Uh, we talk about separating our politics from our religion, and that's a way that people 
begin to say is I don't want to integrate my political actions, my political views with the faith that I hold and what, what I believe to be true, what I believe to be good and what I believe to be right. Because if we do that, it doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, there is going to be inconsistencies in political parties because we are not perfect as human beings and imperfect human beings create imperfect systems and imperfect systems fall short of the glory of God just as our own individual sins and misdeeds. So there is a sense that either, you know, both Democrats and Republicans are going to fall short of the glory of God and that we have to if we're a Christian, begin to evaluate our political activities in, in light of the teaching of scripture, uh, that that poses a challenge. And the further aspect of this I've done in you know another video is that the Bible makes no direct commands about the American political system, about voting or not voting or or anything of that light, that kind of thing. And and we can evaluate with scripture, different political parties and find them both wanting. And then we decide one or the other is the lesser of two evils, so to speak, or one is more good than the other. And then we just do our best in an imperfect human system uh, to, to vote. Uh, at some point, though, for many people, both parties become so severely off track in their minds and their heart, according to their conscience, that they can't vote for either. And that's why you see a lot of people just say, I I'm not going to vote uh, because it's a conscious moral decision. But when we have this, this cognitive dissonance, what's happening is uh, when we begin to be pressed on our behavior, in this case, political activities, and point out how a lot of what we're really rallying around, what we're engaging in, what we're believing in, and how we're acting and behaving and participating in politics is inconsistent, particularly with our Christian beliefs. There is a cognitive dissonance that rises up. There's a discomfort within us, and there's an anger, and, and people often can't accept that, yeah, there's an inconsistency there, and I really need to reevaluate how I engage in politics in light of the teaching of Scripture, what they want to do often is shoot the messenger. They, they want to silence those that would come and speak and challenge uh, their behavior and their political activity uh, in light of the teaching of Scripture and point out the inconsistencies. And what we most want is we most want to feel like what we're doing in the realm of politics is right and good. Uh, so when we're acting in ways that aren't, uh, for example, when we're imitating Donald Trump and we're calling people names and derogatory and speaking slander against them, when we're engaging in reviling and hating and, and expressing bitterness to those that are opposed to us, when we're not loving uh, our enemies as Jesus commanded us to do, as we're, we're not uh, loving our neighbor, um, whoever God brings in, in our path, when, when we're not doing that and we're a Christian, uh, there is going to be that uh, conflict and that conflict is going to cause discomfort. And when we erect a firewall between our politics and, and our Christian faith, we, we do it in such a way to try to prevent ourselves from having that uncomfortable feeling. And then we begin to sear our conscience so that uh, our conscience is seared and the Holy Spirit is, is trying to work in our hearts and our lives. And we are resisting the Holy Spirit, to put it in biblical terms. We, we don't want him to bring forth fruit that's going to change our political activities. Uh, because we're so earthly minded, we've become so earthly minded in the evangelical movement that we're no heavenly good. We're, we're more concerned with earthly politics than gospel mission. And that is true of the movement as a whole. Evangelicalism used to be about gospel mission and the Great Commission. But now it's become about politics and culture wars and building uh, the United States as, as a, a, a kingdom on this earth.
opposite of what Jesus said his mission was, opposite of what we're called to do. And there's no blessing of God in it. And people want to uh, separate in, in their minds the inconsistencies, like I said. So they create this firewall. And so people like me and there are many other channels and other people that are speaking and challenging this, uh, it creates a lot of discomfort. And some people in their immaturity uh, don't know how to deal with that discomfort and to, to reflect and, and to uh, honestly interact back and forth. Because on my channel, there have been some Trump supporters that have been very uh, helpful, even in supporting Trump going back and forth and being open to, to discussing things and to do it maturely. But there are many others that don't. In fact, the vast majority can't maturely inter interact uh, that are part of the MAGA movement. I think largely because it's become a cult. And when you have that kind of cult, when you're part of a cult, it's hard for you to accept anything uh, of your leader uh, falling short of any kind of glorious messianic savior-like standard. And so people really struggle with that. So what we have is a lot of that cognitive dissonance that people are just don't want to be challenged at all about making their behavior come in line with their faith. And they want to support ungodliness. They want to support wickedness because they're full of anger and bitterness. And, and they want that part, that fleshly thing to take over and take control of their lives. And they want to satisfy uh, that rather than the godly things, the good things, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And that's where we call people to repentance. Um, I, I look at my own life. Um, repentance is a daily thing every day. Lord, I, I've got to walk with you every day. I fall short every day. There are things and thought, word, and deed, um, uh, where I have to acknowledge before God that I am not walking in the way he's called me to walk. Now, as I've been a Christian for many years, a lot of those things might not be uh, so external and so visible to people uh, that um, they'd say, oh, look, he's, you know, he's a drunk, he's robbing a liquor store, he's out uh, being unfaithful to his wife. You know, it may not be those things, but the more I walk with God, the more I recognize all those other things in my life. Uh, that fall short of his glory and realize that there is a continual battle. Uh, I'll close with this. Uh, I, my dad, in, in, the, in the week before his death, he was at the time almost 86 years old, was telling me that he was still learning. God was still teaching him how to be a better husband. And he wanted to be a better husband in how he died. Uh, and it really impressed me that here was a man who has walked with God since he was a teenager and wanting to honor God in every aspect of his life, including his marriage, and wanting to, to be a good husband in how he walked through his own death. It's a lifelong thing, is walking with God. And it's, it's something that we can always grow in and we learn to repent, we learn to turn from those things. So I'll wrap up with this. If you're if you're part of MAGA movement and, and you're watching my videos and it's really piercing your heart and making you angry, ask why are you so angry at somebody trying to bring the scripture to bear into politics and warning you about certain things and f speaking with urgency from the heart? Why does it bother you so much? What Why are you so wrapped up in all of this? And begin to reflect and, and read some of the scriptures again. I would suggest, especially those of you that are really wrestling with how you speak and talk about others, is to read uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and 5 and just read it slowly and reflect on what's being said there so that you can maybe grow and return uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ and learn to walk uh, more faithfully with him. That's what I would encourage of you. So thank you for watching. Uh, appreciate you and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. God bless.